بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome once again to our discussions on Surah Al-Waqiyah Now I've been reflecting on the length of Surah Al-Waqiyah and I had a presumption that we could kind of complete this in Ramadan but is it is unlikely because I would like to go in depth through uh, the verses and some of the uh, discussions that are had within the surah. So we'll start obviously in this month and inshallah try to con continue uh, every week uh, thereafter until we can com complete it. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq in this. So we first went through the first nine verses of Surah Waqiyah and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks um, about the day of judgment, what's going to happen on the day of judgment, what's going to happen to the mountains, all of these kind of graphic descriptions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards the end of this um, first nine or so verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then makes it clear وَكُنْتُمْ أَزْوَاجٍ ثَلَاثَةً That you are uh, into three groups. And that's essentially what will be the groups on the Day of Judgment. الصابقون, those who are at the forefront, the people of the right, those who are uh, the believers, and the people of the left, the, the people who are uh, the misfortune, those who um, would reside in hellfire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now in the coming verses will discuss these three groups in detail and so today we will look at the first group Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about which is as as okay which is the the forefront so um, let us look at these verses now so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says was as was as that we literally would translate this as uh, the sabiqun uh, those in front are indeed in front or the foremost okay so interestingly here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know uses the same word twice okay sabiqun now sabiq is described as the one I mean in this context the ones who are in front or it has the meaning of like somebody musabaqa is like a race okay and the sabiq is the one who's won the race so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of, of the three uh, groups of people that have been spoken about this is the highest level okay this is the best level this is the, the supreme okay this is the elite okay and Allah calls them the sabiq those who have won the race those who have you know gone front gone ahead and it's interestingly how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says he doesn't say the sabiq are those people who did these actions or they were you know good people etc he just says was sabiqun as sabiqun those who are in front are indeed those who are front and it's as if, like, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does it, because normally in Arabic, when you have a sentence that has, for example, an is or an are in the middle, like, for example, uh, the sky is blue. Okay, so if you look at the sentence, the sky is blue. So there's two parts here. There's the sky and then there's blue. And the is is in the middle. Now, the sky would say that this kind of, you know, if I say the sky, that brings a sense of curiosity to the person. The sky, what about the sky? Tell me more about the sky. You're saying the sky. What about it? And then the blue will then satisfy that curiosity. So the sky, what, what about the sky? Is blue. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, As-sabiqoon. Giving the reader kind of a sense of curiosity. What about the, the sabiqoon? They are the sabiqoon. As if to say that this is the best title that we can give. This is the best way we could um, satisfy the curiosity of the listener by saying, this is who they are. They are who they are. They are elite. They are exceptional. There's nothing more that we could say about them except that that's what they are. They have won the race. They have gone forward. They have made every single effort to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They've gone above and beyond. And that's why they are uh, specified as a separate elite group by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Essentially, these are people who their life was a service to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Their life was a service to Islam. And we hear many stories of people who all their life, many, many years, they engaged in the, the da'wah uh, of Islam, engaged in teaching people, engaged in community work all their lives. Okay, And that, that's it. And then, khalas, they finished. And so this is speaking about those people, those people who went above and beyond, you know, made a lot of effort. Okay, Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts now to describe some uh, them and also their reward. As a result of them sacrificing their time, sacrificing their effort, sacrificing uh, this short lifespan that they had for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, 
ulaikal muqarrabun okay so this is ulaika means those okay and then we'd say are those are the ones drawn close meaning to allah now there's something very interesting here in arabic here we have ulaika and ulaika is known as an ishara it points towards something so it's as if we're saying those those people okay now in arabic in order for us to say for example like those are the people here those are the ones drawn close technically this al wouldn't be there right it should be like it would be ulaika muqarrabun those are the ones drawn close however there's an al here and whenever there's an al here normally we would have another particle another pronoun to satisfy the sentence from a grammatical perspective so we would have for example hum ulaika humul muqarrabun those are the ones drawn close however there's no hum here right there is no hum here whatsoever so what this gives us a meaning of that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these are the ones drawn close these sabiqun who made so much effort in this dunya to be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and live a life of servitude to Allah. This home is taken out because Allah literally wants to bring the words close. See how he does that? So they are the ones who are drawn close. They are the ones drawn close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that home that is required there grammatically, that's taken out. Because as far as grammar is, although it's a requirement in grammar, as far as rhetorically trying to give the meaning, that supersedes the grammar. So here, the home is taken out to give this emphasis of they have drawn close and literally we will draw the word muqarrabin close. Okay, taking out the word home to give this meaning of they are literally brought close. Now if you think about this word muqarrabin, or muqarrabun, the muqarrab is someone who is brought closer and closer and closer and closer. All right? And on their judgment, the people, uh, it, the sense of gradualness here so on the day of judgment their ranks will be raised more and more and more and more okay and uh, this is very important for us and gives us a perspective as to how we should approach allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every single day every single day we should try and make a little effort to be better and better and better than yesterday every single day and the Prophet ﷺ very beautifully mentioned that the best of actions are those which are done consistently, even if they are small. And so this concept of like this gradual uh, closeness is very significant. In our life, every single day, you know, we should be making small efforts every single day to just get closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We read two, three ayahs of Quran today. Tomorrow I'll read three. The day after I'll try and read four. The day after I'll try and read five. And slowly, slowly, slowly try to get better and better every single day. And that's the key to becoming of those who are the muqarrabun, those who will be gradually brought closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's so significant how Allah says it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say they are close. They are close. They, they are close here. Okay, because if they're just brought close just straight away then it doesn't give that kind of sense of kind of um, uh, like the the greatness there. It's like, for example, if you're in a lift and the lift kind of, you know, let's say it's it's a glass lift and you can see and if it just flies up straight away, then you don't really feel the sense of kind of, um, you know, you've just been lifted from one floor to the other. But when it gradually goes slowly, 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 and then the floor that you're on kind of gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and smaller that kind of gives you a sense of like, oh, okay, this is like, I'm actually being lifted now more. Whereas if it's fast, you don't feel it as such. So here, muqarrabun, this concept of gradual, okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these people, he will bring them closer and closer and closer to him subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And in a, so, so for us in this dunya, it's about making the effort to get closer and closer and closer and closer to him, right? That should always be our object, objective. And we ask Allah that He makes us of those who are close to Him through our gradual daily efforts every single day. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins to speak about what is the reward that has been prepared for these people. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Fi jannatin na'im. Okay. Fi, so in gardens of 
constant luxury and favor okay so very beautifully Allah he, he doesn't say kind of like you know um, they are in gardens of the constant he, he just says in gardens of uh, luxury and, and contentment and uh, favor and by Allah doing that just saying in that that's that they're in there it gives this kind of meaning of you know that's it you know you have worked hard that's going to be your reward. There's not going to be any anything else. There's not going to be any more kind of hard work or effort. Now you put the effort in in this world, and you died upon that, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will just enter you in. That there's, no, there's nothing else there, all right. Um, and this is again because people they they they've left they live their lives you know in a, in a state of servitude to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and this is their reward, right? This is their reward for all of this. And Naim has this meaning of constancy. Okay, in particular the ya here, the ya has the meaning of constant favor and constant luxury. One of the things that we are bound by in this world is time. Okay, we have a start and an end to everything, and so naim gives this meaning of constancy. It's consistent. Okay, constant and consistent in terms of its luxury, consistent in terms of its favor. Right. Now. Continuing on, Allah will now continue on the discussion of uh, Jannah and, and, and the blessings that are going to be given to the people. But he almost has a kind of jumla mu'tarida. It's kind of like a, a few sentences that kind of change the topic slightly. And then he returns back to uh, Jannah. So he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Sullatun min al-awwaleen wa qaleelun min al -akhirin. Okay, so a group from... The early ones and a small number from the latter ones. So, what does this mean? So, these people, the Sabiqun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking about here, he says that. A group, a kind of a large body, a large number of them will be from the awwaleen, from the early ones. Okay, and but then a small group of them, of these sabiqun, these great uh, people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing here, will be from the latter ones. So how do we understand early ones and latter ones? So a lot of the scholars have said that this relates to generations. So the early generations, the generations of uh, the companions around the Prophet ﷺ, they were the Musabiqun, they went above and beyond, they fought battles whilst they were fasting, they fought, you know, went to extreme lengths, they sacrificed their families for, for the sake of the faith, they, they did everything to ensure that they got the contentment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Um, and then the latter generation, the our generations, okay, that, that have proceeded thereafter, they, of, of the Musabiqun, they will be of a small number. So some scholars have, have understood it like this, that majority of the Sabiqun are going to be those from before, those of the early generations, and a small group will be of, of the latter. And that is a sound opinion, because if we look at kind of the degradation of generations as it has gone from the from the golden generation of the of the companions and then to, to what we are, we are today, it has been a total kind of uh, decrease in terms of faith, in terms of piety. This is what we see. Uh, this is a reality, isn't it? All right. However, what's interesting is some scholars have said, no, it doesn't necessarily mean generations to the extent that, of the Sahaba, but it actually means something more. It has the meaning of every generation. Okay, every generation, it has awwaleen and it has akhirin. It has those people who are the awwaleen, those who are the first, okay, when it means early ones, those are the first toward doing good. They just run towards goodness. They don't hang about, they don't question, they don't think, hmm, I'm not sure. They don't do that. They just run towards that which is pleasurable to Allah and they run towards good deeds and they don't look back. Okay? And, وَقَلِيلُ مِنَ الْأَخْنِ But those who look back, they, those who wait, those who look back, those who ponder, and then they might do actions, etc. And trying to seek the pleasure of Allah, there's less of them. Okay? So, these two opinions are there as to how we understand this. But essentially, what makes the Sabiqun are those who literally the, the Sabiqun, those who win the race, those who go above and beyond, those who, you know, they haven't got time to uh, be engaged in 
fodder and entertainment. Their their focus is how do I please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the most important thing here, right? And interesting how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like after these verses, Allah will go back to the discussion of Jannah and what's going to happen, what's happening in Jannah. But it's interesting how this has come in the middle of this, right? To show the greatness of the Sabiqun. That, you know, these are the Sabiqun, they, they, there's, you know, uh, this is who they'll be made up of, right? And it also it's an encouragement for us, okay? It's encouraging us, like, we want to be there. We want to be of those people. Just in the gardens of constant luxury. That's what we want. We don't want to be, you know, stuck in kind of problems and issues uh, and, and, and kind of the mu'amalat of the dunya. We want to be straight into Jannah, isn't it? Right? And so may Allah make us of the sabiqun, right? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes back to speaking about the uh, about Jannah. And so he says, Ala sururim mawduna. Okay, muttaqeena alayha mutaqabilin. So, uh, upon uh, kind of thrones or couches, right? Mawduna, woven together. Okay, muttaqeena alayha mutaqabilin, sitting. Comfortably upon them, meaning upon the the couches and thrones, mutaqabilin facing each other. Okay, and so in Jannah, in this kind of uh, place of constant luxury, constant favors from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, what will be the state of the sabiqun? Ala sururi mauduna upon couches. Woven together, mauduna has the meaning of kind of you know things that are uh, that, that's, that's woven together tightly, right? Um, and this gives us meaning of there'll be a sense of togetherness. Everyone will be together. Okay, you will be you know with those people who you are similar to in terms of actions, in terms of rank, in terms of status, right? And those people who you know all of those people who made you know, made sacrifice in their lives. Tried to be in the servitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? These are the people who are going to be sitting together, right? Sitting together, right? And and then Allah says, Muttaki'ina alayha, relaxing, sitting calmly, with ease. Muttaki'in, right? Muttaqabilin, but they're sitting and they're facing each other. This is beautiful. Can you imagine that? Like, you know, sitting upon these huge, beautiful thrones, right? Woven together, connected together. Right, connected. Why? Because you had the same objective in life. You had the same focus in life. Okay, to, pl to please Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That's what binds you together. Right? Alayha mutaqabilin, facing each other. Okay, because the true adab of sitting and gatherings is to face each other. Okay, it shouldn't be that there should be some people sitting in one place and some people in another place. That is not the correct etiquette of sitting. And so everybody should be together. Everybody should be facing each other. It's very, very important, okay? And that is the true adab, that's the true etiquette of a gathering, okay? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings those true etiquettes together. So everybody will be sitting together almost like in a circle, right? In, in beautiful thrones that are woven together, right? Bound together with the same objective that then results in uh, the highest of companies. Okay, we ask Allah that he makes us from them, okay? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he goes on to say, يَطُوفُ عَلَيْهِمْ وِلْدَانٌ مُخَلَّدُونَ بِأَكْوَابٍ وَأَبَارِيقًا وَكَأْسٍ مِنْ مَعِينٍ Okay, so um, So يَطُوفُ عَلَيْهِمْ Running around uh, them وِلْدَانٌ مُخَلَّدُونَ Young boys Mukhalladun, uh, like permanently young. In age. Bi akwabin wa abariqa. Okay. So bi akwabin wa abariqa. So akwab are basically kind of cups. So with cups. Abariq is like a pitcher, like a jug. Yeah. And, and pitchers. And 
وكأس من معين and then uh, glasses with uh, which are flowing uh, with من uh, معين so kind of um, kind of flowing with drink yeah uh, with drink right so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these people are in this kind of beautiful gardens of constant luxury, constant pleasure. And they are sitting upon these thrones that are woven together, looking at each other, speaking to each other, sitting together. And they see these young boys, okay, who are running around them, okay, and they're permanently young. Why are they per why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning that they are permanently young? Because permanent when 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 people are young, children are young, uh, then they are more enthusiastic. They're more energetic. And so they will be. They will remain in that age, okay. And they will be doing the khidmah. They will be doing the service of these people, right? And they'll be giving them. What will they be giving? Cups and pitchers and glasses of flowing drink or fl or flowing kind of uh, uh, um, wine and pleasurable drink, okay. This is what will happen. So these young uh, boys, energetic, running around, serving them, okay, and and looking after them and bringing them happiness. You know, as a, as a reflective point, we should teach our children khidma at a young age. You know, typically many people they think, oh no, you know, you know, let the kid relax and don't get him to do anything or don't get her to do anything. Oh, they're just a child. No, we should try and teach our children khidma and service at a young age because why? It brings happiness to not only the parents but those who are being served. For example, the guests. It brings happiness. And similarly, here these young boys will be happiness to the sabiqun. Those who are upon these um, elevated thrones, woven together, right? They will bring this sense of happiness, and so it's very, very important, okay? And so they bring these cups, they bring these pitchers, they bring these glasses, flowing with beautiful uh, and, and sweet uh, drink, okay? لا يصدعون عنها ولا ينزفون. Okay, they, uh, they will. Not uh, be um, you said that so, uh, so that is like uh, so that is like um, to be afflicted with a headache or migraine, okay? Not be afflicted with headache. And her as a result of it, yeah, or due to it. وَلَا يُنزِفُونَ Okay, نَزَف is like to um, like to lose your intellect, to go drunk basically, yeah? So they're not losing their intellect, okay? And so this drink, uh, whatever drink, this beautiful kind of drink that it is, it will not cause sickness, it will not cause harm, it will not cause them to lose intellect. Now, if you think about kind of alcohol in this life, right? There's four things that it causes. It causes drunkenness. It can cause migraines. It can cause vomiting, and it cause it causes urination. The drink of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that is going to be served to these people upon elevated thrones, at the hands of these young boys, energetic and full of um, uh, kind of enthusiasm. This will not have any of these attributes. Okay, of, of drunkenness and migraine. This will be beautiful, wonderful drink. Okay, that will not only be a means of satiation, but it will be a means of um, pleasure. It will be a means of pleasure, right? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now the, the, the drink has been discussed, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the food. وَفَاكِهَةٍ مِمَّا يَتَخَيَّرُونَ وَلَحْمِ طَيْرٍ, ولحم طير مِمَّا يشتهون. Okay, and fruits. From uh, what they select, from what they select, and the meat of a bird, طير, from what they يشتهون, desire. Okay, so they will have fruits now. Uh, in the Arabic language like this word فاكها, it has the meaning of to be happy and so these fruits 
okay, they will make us happy. We will look at these fruits. Why will they make us happy? Because they are luscious. They are quite large. These fruits will be. They will smell nice as well. And we will remember. Okay, that these people, the sabiqun, will remember that this is what they used to have before. Okay, in the dunya. So they'll see an apple and they'll be like, oh, I remember apple. They'll see a mango and say, oh, I remember mango. Right? And so that will make them happy. And so these fruits that make them happy, mimma yatakhayyarun. And so th this word takhayyar, it has the meaning of you, the, the, the sabiqun will spend time picking these. Right? They will, they will have all of these trees and they can spend time picking them, enjoying them, looking at them, making them happy. And then they can pick up them and they can eat. Whatever they want, they can eat. Okay. And the, uh, the meat of a bird from whatever they desire. Right? So, you know, it is mentioned in a hadith that a person will be sitting up in Jannah and looking at the bird as it flies up in the sky. And just have this moment, just have this kind of thought that, you know, might, I would just be really happy to see, like, you know, if, if I could eat that, that looks really tasty. And then we'll look down and all of a sudden it is there on the plate, right there on the plate. Okay, and that is one of the, the blessings of, of Jannah, that everything that you desire, everything that you want will be given to you. Right. Um, and, and here, like the interesting thing here is, you know, you can customize. You, know, you have the ability to have, you have full control as to what you want. You want something in a specific way, it can, can be given to you. And the reason why Fakiha fruits is mentioned first, then this issue of meat, is because like we've said, you know, the whole purpose here is not eating because there'll be a sense of hunger. No. It'll be eating because there's a sense of happiness. A sense of happiness, right? And so this kind of you know, you start off with that makes you happy, right? So the fruits here will make us happy, right? It's really interesting here, we just reflect on, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking here about, like, you know, whatever you desire, you'll be able to eat. And it's very interesting because upon this earth, what is our uh, focus? How do we kind of get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We curb our desires. So that which we, you know, our, we have our one-time desire towards, we curb that, we control that, we try to limit that. And through the limitation and control of those things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us a situation where we can desire whatever we want, in whatever state we want, in whatever time we want, in whatever quantity we want. Okay, Th this is the beauty of this. Okay, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَهُورٌ عِينٌ كَأَمْثَالِ اللُّؤْلُؤِ الْمَكْنُونَ Okay, وَهُورٌ عِينٌ uh, and beautiful spouses. Ain, uh, large, you could say en enchanting eyes. Okay, كأمثال اللؤلؤ المكنون. Okay, the like of um, pearls hidden away. So these beautiful spouses, okay, who have beautiful eyes. Not only Ain has the meaning of um, they are beautiful to the eye and they have beautiful eyes themselves. The like of kind of hidden away pearls. And, you know, this is, um, I mean, one of the interesting things is, like the Prophet Sassim said, that Jannah is that which Mala Ainu Ra'at. That which no eye has ever seen. And so we can't really begin to even describe what this Hurul In would be like. Okay, we can't. The, although there are descriptions and Allah subhanahu and the Prophet has given descriptions for us. Essentially, these are these are beautiful spouses that will make us happy and it will be a source of happiness for us, and they will be happy for us. Because of the efforts and the struggles that we went through in this world, Allah will bless us with these things. Right? And then Allah goes on to say. Jaza'an bima kan wa ya'mal. And this is the most important thing, right? Jaza'an. Okay? A vast uh, compensation for what they used to do. A vast compensation. This, all of this, okay? This beautiful, luscious gardens and uh, 
raised thrones that are woven together and these young boys running around giving you all of these drinks and this beautiful hur uh, al and the the fruits and the and the birds and all of these things why jaza'an a huge vast comprehensive compensation for what you used to do for your a'mal that's the key thing here your a'mal and in the end of the day it's all about our a'mal okay that's what's going to set us apart here from those who are felicit uh, what will set us apart what will set apart those who are felicitous and those who are wretched and those who are uh, uh, you know going to live a life of, of misery in the day of judgment and this is the most important thing here our actions those actions which are done correctly and done sincerely that is the key to success nothing more than that and our job in this life our purpose in this life is to obey and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and amass as many good deeds as we possibly can and doing actions which will be a means of uh, protection for us but also a means of success and felicity for us okay jaza and a vast compensation that's it. all of this is because of what they were doing what what they spent their time doing what they f- focused on in life that's it that's what it's all about okay and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally he mentions one more beautiful characteristic of jannah and he says لا يسمعون فيها لغوا ولا تأثيما إلا قيلا سلاما سلاما. Okay, they will not hear in it meaning uh, Jannah. لغوا. Okay, futile discussion. ولا تأثيما. Oh, uh, and and sinful talk. Illa qilan salama, salaman salama. Except the statement peace, peace. Right. So they will not hear any type of kind of nonsense. Lahu is just you know. Just pointless, useless discussion, right? Wala ta'theem and ta'theem comes from the word itham, which means sin. Ta'theem is that which draws you closer towards sin. So many times you have discussions, and it's you know it's going towards a certain direct trajectory. It's going towards saying things which are inappropriate. That also, so no futile discussion and no talk which kind of leads towards sin. None of that. You will not hear any of that. Except salaman salaman. Now, the scholars have reflected upon this word salaman salaman, and this is not uh, like it doesn't have the meaning of okay, everybody will be saying salam alaikum, salam alaikum, salam alaikum. Well, it has kind of that meaning, but also this word here salaman, this fathatain here, this two zabars here, is very important because it has the meaning of that you will, you will go around to people and coming in a state of peace. Key thing here, a state of peace. So they will have peaceful discussions. There will not be any arguments, no any kind of disputations, not any kind of you know uh, clashing, but rather there will be peaceful discussion, beautiful discussion. This is what is being spoken about here, right? And so these are the characteristics of the people of the Sabiqun and on the reward that has been um, uh, kind of um, prepared for these people, okay? Of the beautiful nature of Jannah, the beautiful nature of um, all of these rewards that are prepared for them. Now, in final closing, let us just reflect upon what we have uh, discussed today. Look at some of the blessings that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has described for the uh, the sabiqun. Allah has mentioned that you know the sense of closeness, muqarrabun, they have been brought close, and that essentially that's essentially what we are. Right? We, are we are social animals. We like company. Whoever that may be, that may be our family, maybe we have friends, maybe our work colleagues. We like closeness. Okay, and so on that day. We will be in the best of company, the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about they will be on raised thrones, okay, that will be woven together. Okay, this, ten, this, this sense of calm, this sense of relaxation. And if you think about this life, it's all about worry, isn't it? You know, we're worrying about the bills, we're worrying about the mortgage, we're worrying about the children, about the timetable, they've got to go here, we've got to do this, we've got all of this. And that, in, in essence, that worry kind of is the motivating factor for us. 
like we do things because we're worried about the consequences, right? I have to go to work because if I don't pay the bills, then there'll be no electricity. It's always worry, constant worry, constant worry. But upon that day, those people, the sabiqun, they will have none of that. They will have none of that. No worry whatsoever, right? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about food and drink. What we all love, we all love food and drink. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will prepare for us the best of food and drink. The best of it. Presented to us in the best of ways. Given to us from wherever we want, from whatever desires that we have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this concept of illness. The drink will give us illness. Sometimes people live all their lives with permanent chronic illnesses. Or due to whatever kind of maybe the food that they have or even hereditary. That's not in their fault and they end up you know, getting ill. On that day, no illness. You know, in Jannah, the Sabiqun, no illnesses whatsoever. No pains, no worries. Okay, eat and be content, nothing to worry about. And then good speech as well. Okay, none of this kind of futile discussion. People end up fighting for years and years over just an argument that they had or a discussion that they had with somebody and it just, you know, takes people off a different way. And so these kind of things... It is really beautiful how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the sabiqun enjoying these things because it makes us reflect about how we should work upon these things as well. Who do we bring close? Who are our close companions? You know, do they remind us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our close companions? Okay? We are always in a constant state of worry. We're always worried. what do we worry about though, really? Are we worried about the day of judgment that we're gonna be standing in front of Allah? Are we worried about the actions that we are amassing upon you know upon this earth? What have we got to present to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The food and drink that we eat, is it the best of food and drink that we eat? Why are we drinking? Are we just eating and drinking to excess? Or are we drinking and eating so that we, it helps us in the pursuit of, of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Right? We have sicknesses, we have illnesses. That is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives cure. And the speech, the most important thing, this tongue of ours, it can be the means of us entering into the highest levels of Jannah or the means of us uh, dwelling in the lowest parts of hellfire. What do we speak about? The disputations and the arguments and the, uh, the kind of clashes that we have with people. Let us fix them up. Whilst we have the time now, let us fix them up. And so these are the Sabiqun. We ask Allah, oh Allah, make us of the Sabiqun. Oh Allah, make us of those people who are for, at the forefront. Those who are making the extra effort, those who are going above and beyond, they're sacrificing the time, the wealth, the health, everything that they have for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us the strength to follow in the footsteps of the Sabiqun and that He grants us this great reward as well. Zakmala khair wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.